Traders, welcome to this video. Will Sebastian from The Trading Mentor. We're going live again at noon time today. Don't forget if you want to get on board with our free training, get underneath, you'll also get your email updates. Must too. So watch this all the way to the end, you'll get my personal bias as well. Uh, dollar against the Japanese yen. Well, it's rallied back into these highs, you can see. We're just breaking ab above now where you had former um, intervention levels. Okay, if I just swap to the monthly for a minute, you can see uh, it tightens things together a bit. Previously, back in um, OT22, okay, 2022, you had your fall there. That came about as Bank Japan said, you know what, we don't want it any higher. Okay, you then get this um, short side impetus again. And now ask yourself, what would your bias be given you're at the same point again? Because I know exactly what I would rather do at this point. And, you know, the answer why at the end of the day is actually relatively simple. Because if you look, like I said there, and then you look here, what's happening is repetition. And markets, financial markets as a whole, are simply repetition over and over and over again. That's why all of these levels that you see coincide, just like this, for example. That fall where you had you had price rise there happens again here. And similarly, this uh, fall you have and price rejection occurs again across the board over here. So what's happening is there's this constant repeating over and over. So your judgments for price point entry, first of all, for when you're getting a deal in the market, it's got to be based on um, valid price points where repetition has occurred, because if something has occurred once, it's you know more probable again that it may occur in the future at the same point, because those areas are flip zones, or those areas are price points where, for example, traders are now saying, um, like up here, okay, that's enough. In other words, the yen is too weak against the, Jap um, the, the US dollar, right? So you have to ask yourself, why would their bias change from this just because you've you've reached the same point a matter of months later? That was only November 2023. Like I said in other videos, there's always going to be a saturation point. There's always going to be a point where traders say that is it. Enough is enough. So coming up to that area, you've had reports about anything from 152 to 155 could be intervention area. If there is intervention, may see that further fall. Now, I will just discuss why the dollar is still rising against the Japanese yen. Um, and the reason why is market sentiment and market bias. You've had uh, people like Fed's Kashkari come out and say, and Mesta, people like that, and give the idea of a more hawkish tone or perhaps the prolonging of, um, of, of rates in the US, even floating the idea of putting them up. Um, so that really is dangerous for markets overall. Um, a little bit worrying uh, because the rhetoric before that, especially from Powell, is that, you know, things are OK. And that's why you've had such a risk on market people flooding into risk on assets, pushing up stock markets and things like that. But obviously, higher rates um, at this point are going to mean that people are more stretched for cash for a longer period of time. So businesses might not make much money um, in the near future, at least, or even in the you know a year or two. However, when you're talking about currency markets, what you're looking at then is foreign or domestic cash flooding into that currency. So a demand for the dollar based on the rates being higher, because obviously if interest rates are higher from banks, that gets passed on somewhat to uh, consumers or you know, large scale investors who want fixed income, essentially. And um, you know that demand pushes the price up. So the reason why this is still climbing, although the Bank of Japan has put rates up slightly, they know putting rates up from minus 0 0.1 to zero is not going to do an awful lot. It's not going to absolutely, um, you know, throw the, the yen into strength. It's not. So that's why they're putting out the idea of intervention, because that is something which really would put the cat amongst the pigeons and cause the fall required, at least for now. OK, and they would probably like that trajectory to continue like this longer term. But they've said, you know, they're watching tentatively, you know, they're sort of happy, whether that's true or not, you know, it's debatable. But if they do intervene, anything higher, you know, you'll probably see the market come down. Some reports have said 
that for now the yen may float between a range of 145 and 155. So I wouldn't say rate changing at the moment for Bank of Japan is going to do anything. I think they know that what they've done, putting it to zero, hasn't done anything. And the fact that the rates are still high in the, in the US means more or less you're waiting for a larger fall because um, of some kind of sentiment bias, which could, of course, be intervention from the Bank of Japan. So that is really where you're at and waiting. So the reason why, if you're sitting there shorting it, wondering why it hasn't fallen, even though it's come up from you know here to there to there for, for a very long time, the answer is not difficult to get. It's because the rates are still high and the tone from the Fed now is, is more hawkish, meaning rates could be higher for longer, so therefore the demand for the dollar extends. And, you know, you don't have the yen strength required yet to make it fall. So you might see something called a market mega stop. I think that's very likely at this point. That is where you just pop above this previous high. And then the market says, you know what? We'll short it. And the reason why the larger scale shorts get in around here, OK, and that it's wise to do so if you haven't already, at least in my opinion, um, is because they're going to get a better deal if they're shorting above where you've had intervention before. They're going to get a better price than, um, than, than where you are now. And they need that because their volume of trade is so large that it will move the market before they even get the entry in. So if you do come slightly higher and you get this mass of market maker stops, okay, they're called that because you'll have loads of people who will be sat here now shorting with their stop loss above this previous high. What will happen is the stop gets cut out and they, um, they're out the trade and then the market makers flood and they ruin, they ruin all the, uh, the retail side, taking all the stops because they like their entries higher. They make loads of money off everyone who, um, you know, who had their stop placed there. So I'd be very, very, very wary of putting a stop loss there just above the previous high because you could easily fall victim to that. I would say in any case, if you're going to short this, I would do it lightly. I'd be absolutely prepared for 153, 45, anything higher than now. If you're going to scale in short, even if it's now, it's got to be light. I would say there's a good chance if you do get kind of sentiment bias via intervention, you may return to uh, this key MA, your 100 at least first, in line with key support uh, and, you know, across the board. I think in the longer term, should you get changes in monetary policy, reducing rates by the Fed, etc., then you'll start to come down here. Your 200 MA will come up and you could start to look at investor longs down here. So, you know, slight buying for the time being. And um, if the currency just completely resets on all of that sentiment and, the, you know, the Bank of Japan puts rates up, this would probably take years, by the way then you could look long lower. So looking long in between is ideal because you can trade those individual bounces um, and those ebbs and flows if you like. You probably wouldn't buy it though at all unless you get a big fall because the next move is likely to be planting sentiment against you. And it's probably going to be wise, therefore, to trade the move as it comes. So like I said, and I really don't like the pens on this. <laughs> um, like I said, it might look something like this. So it's going to be curvy ebbs and flows. So I would short each pop, essentially, and just ride the sentiment bias and ride the weight down in the new forming downtrend, should that begin to occur. So just to be clear as well, I mean, you can see the rejection here, price action rejection across the board, not doing an awful lot. You're running straight into it. Absolutely won't be surprised if in the very near term you get higher. CPI tomorrow as well in the US, you might find that shakes markets a bit as well. Whether it actually pulls things down or not is debatable, but the overall trajectory for inflation in the US so far, at least, um, has been supporting the case for, for easing so far somewhat or, or maybe fully. Uh, if you did have a, a, a dent in that, okay, and the dent in that easing bias, then you may find that Kashkari again starts flooding in saying, oh, I want to keep the rates high, etc. And then there's disagreement across the board, which would be even worse. Um, and I would find the risk on market, you know, you might find uh, fades and traders rush to the end to buy it uh, and they never need to intervene and things go like this. So 
you know, that would be tragedy, really, if you had something like that tomorrow, but it could bring the yen some strength from safe haven inflows and therefore a drop in the US dollar yen. So don't forget, we cover markets in depth like this every single day, sentiment bias, technical bias, risk plans for everything. We trade for income ourselves. Uh, don't forget, you can get it all underneath. See you in the next one.